Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to ECC online classes. Today's lecture will be from ECC Fast Track Pre Intermediate. Kindly open your books, ladies and gentlemen, to page 15. Unit 5 Personalities. You will discuss on the following points in the English club. Class discussion. Are you an introvert or extrovert? An introvert, ladies and gentlemen, is a person who is so quiet and so reserved. He doesn't like, you know, mixing with people. He wants to be alone, okay? So he's an um, introvert. Opposite, extrovert. A person is an extrovert if he or she likes mixing with people, is so, you know, easygoing, okay? So he's an extrovert. He likes working with people. Okay, while an introvert is so reserved and prefers working alone. So that's the difference. So the next, do you prefer to marry an introvert or extrovert? Why? So if you want to marry, would you like your wife or husband to be introvert or extrovert? So why? Let us know. Do you get offended? Do you get angry? You feel that someone insulted you, okay? Injured your feelings, offended you. So do you get offended easily? What are the things that annoy you? What are the things that make you angry? Do you get angry easily? So if yes, what are the things that make you angry? The next, do you always feel your reasoning is superior to others? For example, your idea. Do you always feel that your idea is better than other people's ideas? Do you always feel this way? And that Others need to agree with whatever you say and obey you without complaint. Do you want people to obey you always without complaining? You tell them, go right, they go right. Go back, they go back. Go forward, they go forward. And nobody should ask you why. So if you tell someone to go, to go away and he asks you why should I go away? You get angry. Are you this type? Okay, who want people to do? Okay, the things you want them to do without complaints. So let us know the type of person you are. In your opinion, is it a good idea to hide your true personality from your fiancé? during your engagement for fear that he or she may be discouraged from marriage? Why? Do you think it's a good idea? Okay, because some people, okay, they hide their personality. For example, the gentleman smokes. He smokes. And he knows that his fiance doesn't like men who smoke. So when he's in front of his fiance, he will not smoke. So that his fiance okay, will be happy. And then after the marriage, he can now smoke. Because he doesn't care how she feels. He doesn't care what she thinks. Okay? So he doesn't care about her. Because they are married. So do you think that this is right? That you should hide your personality from your from your fiance? Till after marriage, you can now let her or let him to know your true colors, 
rate of flow. On what criteria would you select your husband or wife? So criteria means a principle okay, on which something is based. You have a fixed standard. Okay, that's your okay criterion. Criterion one, criteria plural. So we have singular plural criterion criterion like phenomenon phenomena okay this is from latin and in latin grammar okay words that end with o n simply change the o n to a to make it plural so criterion criteria phenomena phenomena okay So, on what criteria would you select your husband or wife? You have your standard. For example, the wife must be um, must have a long hair, for example, or a short hair, for example. She must be short. Some men would say, no, my wife must be tall. And some ladies will say that, for example, my husband should be so kind, so gentle, should always listen to what I tell him to do, and he will do those things. And he has to be um, an engineer, for example, so you have your own standard. So, what are your criteria? Okay, you let us know. Do you consider yourself patient, or do you prefer to have what you want without delay? If you want anything, you want it now. There is nothing like come tomorrow. No, no, no. You want it now. So, are you this type who is not patient? Who is impatient? You let your colleagues know. Do you consider yourself strict with children? Strict. You set out your rules and they have to follow. Okay? After school, come home and do your homework. And no television till after your homework. So you are strict with them. So if they should watch television immediately after coming back from school, you can get you can become so angry with them. Okay? So you are strict. You set out rules and you want those children to follow the rules rigidly. Okay? So you are strict. So do you consider yourself strict with children? In your opinion, is it a good idea to be strict with children? Let us know. In your opinion, is it a good idea? Why or why not? The next, do you prefer to convince your spouse, your spouse, either your husband or your wife, your spouse, do you prefer to convince your spouse on your ideas by reasoning? with you or by force your husband or your wife do you try to you know to exchange your points of view to exchange your you know to consult each other and, and exchange your ideas so that you can agree on a certain point or you want her to do what you want by force you don't for example ask for her own opinion maybe her own opinion is better than yours but then some people want their spouse for example to follow their own idea only okay so what kind of person of um, a personality are you you let us know if you are owed some money for example someone took some money from you and promised to pay back later 
So that person is owing you. I take your money, tell you, okay, I will give you tomorrow, I am owing you. The next day, I have to pay you this money, I have to pay it back. Okay? So if you are owed, if somebody took some money from you, and you are debtor, sorry, sorry, if you are owed some money, somebody took the money from you, okay, and you are debtor, the person who took this money from you, when you have data and credit, data, this B is silent, you don't say debtor, no, data, data, B is silent, okay, then opposite, creditor, so if I give you money, I'm your creditor, and you take this money from me to pay me back, okay, you are my debtor. Like, if you take a loan from the bank, you take like 1 million Sudanese pounds from the bank. So the bank is your creditor. And you are the debtor. Debtor, okay? So, if you are owed some money and your debtor keeps on giving different excuses, for not paying back. So every time he will tell you, I'm sorry, I cannot pay back because my wife is ill. Sorry, I will pay you tomorrow. So he keeps on giving you excuses. Do you give him or her a chance? Or do you threaten him? You shout at him, I will take you to the police. I will shoot you down. I will come and hit you. Do you threaten him? Or you tell him, no problem. Okay? So, do you give him or her a chance or do you threaten to make him afraid to threaten him or her to take legal action to take him to the court to take legal action so you let us know okay okay let's look at these three pictures which of the below personalities do you like and why? We have Mahatma Gandhi, Julian Assange, Princess Diana. So you tell us which of them you like, okay? And why? We open to the reading passage, ladies and gentlemen. How to deal with personalities at work. Some people have very different personalities from their co-workers. Having a variety, variety means different types, variety, different types. Having a variety of, of um, personalities in the workplace can be an advantage. So this can be an advantage. Giving employers different perspectives, perspectives, point of view, point of view, point of view, okay? Perspectives can be point of view on important business issues, on important business matters. Employers must understand how to deal with people who have different personalities. Okay? So employers must know how to deal with people with different personalities in a productive way, in a productive way, in a positive way, in a way which will bring positive results. Okay? In a productive way. Step one, try to assess, try to evaluate, okay, to assess what personality type is. The assessment helps you decide whether you are an introvert or extrovert. So this assessment will help you, okay? Whether you make 
decisions based on thoughts or feelings. Whether you take your decisions after deliberating on it, thinking, thinking, then you can now okay, reach, okay, at a conclusion or try at, at least you can think, consider the situation and then consider the issue carefully, okay, and then um, and then you can, okay, you can take a particular um, action based on what you understand from, okay, um, the, the problem or the issue or feelings. It means you don't think. You simply take this decision based on the way you feel. Okay? So is it based on thought? You have to think, 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 then think of the best solution and then take to that. Or you simply take your decision, okay, in a rash manner without, without due consideration and maybe in the end you will make mistakes. So we want to know your personality type. Okay, whether you make your decisions based on thoughts, you think, 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 consider the, um, how do I put it, the pros and the cons, consider the advantages and the disadvantages, then you arrive at a solution. Okay, and then you take your decision based, okay, on that, okay, on, um, on that idea or based on the result of your consideration or is it just based on feelings your feelings and if you're more organized if you're organized all the things have to be arranged properly or flexible flexible the opposite of flexible ladies and gentlemen is uh, rigid rigid opposite flexible rigid flexible you can change but rigid to the end okay you can consider for example certain things happen you can say no problem you can there are rules but then you are not that rigid you can also sometimes change the rules based on the situation but if the situation changes and instead of changing those rules you stick to the rules without caring Without, for example, realizing the fact that the condition has changed, you are so rigid. So you hold on to those rules rigidly. Okay? Rigid. Opposite. Flexible. Knowing your personality type might help you understand why you are having trouble working with some people on your team. So if you know your personality type, because if you are an introvert, you cannot work in a team. But if you are an extrovert, you can. You can blend properly. Okay? So, once you know why you are having a conflict, a conflict means a serious disagreement or argument. Serious disagreement. That's a conflict. Okay? You may handle it better. So, if you know your personality type, you can handle your conflict better. Step two, assess the personalities of your co-workers. Try to assess their personalities. Try to know are they introvert or extrovert. With whom you most often have conflicts. Okay? For example, if you're an introvert and you think your co-worker is an extrovert, this difference may explain why you, why you are constantly being annoyed by your co-workers' attempts to talk to you while you are working. Because you are working, if you are an introvert, you don't like anyone to disturb you. You like to work alone. So if your co-worker comes, tries to chat with you, you may be offended. Okay, so why are you offended? Because you are an introvert. So, step three, plan a solution that bridges the gap. So there is a gap. 
so it will bridge it will bring it will bridge the gap so it's like building a bridge gap and then there's a bridge so you reach a common ground okay So, plan a solution that bridges the gap between your personality and your co-workers. It means your co-workers' personality. Once you have a good idea of what they are, of their personality type, for example, in the scenario above, in the above scenario, okay, when somebody gets angry easily because the co-workers and the co-worker tries to talk to him or her. Designate. Designate means designate quiet times. You have to appoint, to choose, to fix times. Okay, designate. For example, you can say from this time to this time, I will do this. From this time to this time, I must do this. So you are designating. Okay? So, designate quiet times and talking times. Designate, fix a time which you want to work alone without anyone disturbing you. And also, talking times. Fix a time, okay, which you can, you know, chat with your friends. That's your talking time. This will allow your co-worker to get the energy and feedback he probably needs to do the job well. So this will allow your co-worker, okay, to have the energy, okay, and get and feedback. He probably needs to do the job well because maybe he needs, he wants to ask you a question that has to do with the job and you don't want any disturbance. So he will wait until the talking time the time you have designated that he can come to you okay to ask for solutions to his problems and you can give him or her okay your opinion or your idea okay so that he or she can go and continue his or her work perfectly okay but it will also allow you the quiet time you need to process your work. Also, you will enjoy working without being interrupted. Because your colleagues, they know that from, for example, from 10, from 10 to 10 a.m. to 11 um, a.m. This is the talking time. But from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. You don't want to talk to anyone because you want to concentrate on your work. So they will not come to you from 12 to 3. But they can come from 10 to 11. Okay? So this will allow you to... Sorry. It will also allow you the quiet time you need to process your work. Step 4. Managers should give tasks. Task means a specific work somebody has to do that's his or her task so managers will give tasks to the person with the personality best um, best suited to handle them best suited to handle them for example the manager can know okay this is this man is an introvert it means he or she, sorry, it means he cannot work in the marketing department because marketing department needs someone to be easygoing, outgoing. You know, you can meet with people, you can chat, you can explain, okay, talk to them about the products available in the company. But if the person who is going to work in that department is an introvert, he or she cannot do this job. So in this case, such a person has to be an extrovert okay so this will help the manager if he knows the personality type to designate a specific function or duty or task 
to a specific person based on his or her, or her personality um, type. For example, ask the most creative person to generate innovative something, innovative something. Somebody is bringing something that was never in existence. We are innovating. That thing was not there. And he tried to imagine, imagine and create it. So he's so innovative. Okay? Innovative ideas. Innovative, innovative ideas for getting clients so that he can get more clients to the company. A client is a person who buys products or um, benefits from the services of maybe of a company. For example, your company is selling furniture. So I buy those furniture from your company. I am your client or you're a lawyer and I come to you for legal advice or I have legal problems and I need you to help me. So I am your client, okay? Client. The most organized person should be responsible for translating those ideas into a report for management. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll read this together, okay? Reading. How to deal with personalities at work. Some people have very different personalities from their co-workers. Having a variety of personalities in the workplace can be an advantage, giving employers different perspectives on important business issues. Employers must understand how to deal with people who have different personalities in a productive way. Step one, try to assess what your personality type is. The assessment helps you decide whether you're an introvert or extrovert, whether you make decisions based on thoughts or feelings, and if you're more organized or flexible. Knowing your personality type might help you understand why you are having trouble working with some people on your team. Once you know why you are having a conflict, you may handle it better. Step 2. Assess the personalities of your co-workers with whom you must often have conflicts. For example, if you are an introvert and you think your co-worker is an extrovert, this difference may explain why you are constantly annoyed. Sorry, why you are constantly being annoyed by your co-workers' attempts to talk to you while you're working. Step 3. Plan a solution that bridges the gap between your personality and your co-workers. Once you have a good idea of what they are, for example, in the scenario above, designate quiet times and talking times. This will allow your co-worker to get the energy and feedback he probably needs to do the job well. But it will also allow you the quiet time you need to process your work. Step 4. Managers should give tasks to the person with the personality best suited or best suited. Both are correct. You can say suited or you can say suited best suited to handle them. For example, ask the most creative person to generate innovative ideas for getting clients. The more organized person should be responsible for translating those ideas into a report for management. Ladies and gentlemen, we go over to the next page. Questions. One. According to the passage, 
How should managers benefit? Sorry. According to the passage, how should managers handle their personnel? How should they deal with their employees, their personnel? Two, what can help one decide whether he or she is an introvert or extrovert? Three, if one is constantly having conflicts with his or her co-workers, what could be the reason according to the passage? Four, according to the passage, what is the importance of knowing your personality type? Five, which adjectives in the passage mean the same as shy and sociable? So this will be your homework and you also have homework, another homework, writing in not less than 180 words. Write a composition on the topic, the person I admire most. Try to use as many adjectives and adverbs as possible. So grammar revision adverbs, certain adverbs cannot be derived by adjective, sorry, from adjectives by adding ly. For example, we said that for a, we can we can change from adjectives to adverbs by adding ly. Beautiful, beautifully. Careful, carefully. Gentle, gently. But not all can be changed. For example, fast, fast. Ahmed is fast. He drove fast. The boy is good. He spoke well okay so these are some of the exceptions ladies and gentlemen thank you for being with me have a nice time and goodbye